what you just witnessed is a mechanic in the 2018 video game Dragon Ball Fighters called Auto Combo. It consists in giving new players the option to perform a full combo by just pressing light attack or medium attack multiple times. And aside of being a really controversial topic for the fighting game community, it's a great example of how it's possible to perform multiple actions with just one input. And that's exactly why we're going to program such a system in Godot. Okay, perfect. Uh, that intro out of the way. Um, what we're going to do today, it's really simple actually. Let me make this invisible. We're going to replicate the triple slash uh, from Mega Man X4, of course, because I'm a big Mega Man X fan. Uh, and it consists in pressing the attack button really fast like this uh, so zero actually performs the triple slash but if we take too long like this uh, he'll go back to the first state or the first attack um, I had a lot of trouble with this code, but I simplified it a lot, and now it's just this. <laughs> I'll put right here the, the photo of the first version of the code, and that's the version that I actually used for my update of Mega Man X4 in Godot. <laughs> And yeah, it was really overcomplicated, but now it's pretty good. So, uh, yeah, I'll first explain all of the thought process behind the code, and then we'll just slap it right into the dough. You ready? First, we'll create a variable called attack points, or in my code's case, saber points. The variable is going to hold a number value that it is going to depend on how many actions you want to perform consecutively with just one input. In my case, Zero has three attacks, so the number I chose is, of course, three. If your character has five attacks, you might want to have five as a number, if six, six, and so on. We're then going to drain the attack points to Zero by subtracting one for every attack the character does. But, how do we restart the attack cycle after? That's simple. There are two factors that could cause the restart of an attack cycle. Either by taking too long to perform the next input, or by finishing the cycle to start a new one. Both are applied in my simple code by giving attack points its original value. For the taking too long scenario, just create a timer that will start itself every time an attack is performed and that on timeout will restart the attack points back to the original number you chose for it. And for the finished cycle one, we'll just give attack points its original value every time the last attack animation is finished. Very simple, right? Now, let's just throw this stuff into Godot, shall we? Okay, excellent. Now that most of the theory was explained, let's just throw everything in. First, I'll explain what I have here and what you should have here. We have this kinematic body called Zero. Uh, the script has the kinematic body thing line. We have a movement variable, the up variable that it's pretty much needed for the for this line of code this is pretty basic uh, so it just emphasizes how easy this is but yeah we have an animated sprite I prefer using animated sprite over animation player 
I just understand everything way more with frames. So we have some animations, idle, whoops, idle, jump, saber, 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 walk. Uh, these three sabers are the three states of animation that I, I talk about uh, in the theory part. And we're going to use them here. And we have, of course, a basic box collision shape. I'm just going to rename this to zero collision, even if we're not going to use it really. Okay, so let's start programming then. As I said before, we're going to create a variable called attack points. And I'm going to give it a 3 value. I explain why already. So we have our attack point variable. And now we're going to write in the process part. If input is action just pressed, I have X for my attack button. I suppose you know how to uh, create new inputs, but if you don't you go to product settings input map and Just add one here you uh, write the name action Add and you add a key over here, but yeah, I'm not going to do that so if input is action pressed, but we're gonna add and attack points equal three Zero sprite. Oh, yeah. I'm missing one equal sign here. Zero sprite play saber one. I think that's how my animation is called. Let's try this. Okay, perfect. Uh, it ends, but it goes back to the. Uh, I mean, it doesn't go back to any animations because we. To be honest, we don't have any animation for default, for default. But we can also force this uh, by using signals. We go to the animated sprite signals. I don't really know how to do it with animation player, so I'm sorry for animation play users. You go to animation finished, connect and zero. We connect it and. Uh, here it says function on zero sprite animation finished, so we're just going to write if zero sprite animation equal saver one zero sprite dot animation no zero sprite play idle. Let's see how this works. Okay. He goes back to the idle post, which is pretty handy and pretty good. We're getting there. Now, the rest is really simple. You just do if input is elif, input is action, just pressed X. And attack points equals 2. Zero sprite play saber two. This is not going to work because we're not subtracting any attack points like I say that we should do. After every attack, we're going to subtract uh, a number of attack points. So uh, if after uh, pressing X the first time, attack points equals attack points minus one let's see how this goes ba -ba. nice uh, we advance to the second animation and it's fairly simple so uh, if input uh, yeah, we're going to do just the same thing here attack points whoops attack point ah, attack points equals attack points 
minus one. And finally, uh, a leaf e input is action, just press X and attack points equal to one. Zero sprite, play saver three. And attack points equals attack points minus one. Let's see now. Pop, pop, pop. Nice. So we're going to do the same with the uh, return to the idle state after every attack. We're going to add this little thing, which means or. By the way, this means and, but I think it's pretty self explanatory. So, if you sprite animation equals saber one or zero, if zero sprite, no, or zero sprite dot animations equals two, or zero sprite dot animation equal, equals three, we should get back to the idle animation. Bop, 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 bop. Oh yeah, we can. We can't really go back since we don't have a way to restart the cycle. We're going to do that now. So this is the part where we actually add the timer. So we go to the root uh, node. We search for the timer. I'm gonna change the name as always. Oh, no, I'm going to call it attack reset timer. And as I said, we're going to create the. We're going to start the attack reset timer every time that X is pressed. So, after pressing X, attack reset timer will start. We're going to do the same here and the same here. We're going to edit the timer values. We're going to wait just 0.3 seconds. I think that's the sweet spot. The sweet spot. And we're going to make it one shot. Excellent. Now we're going to use a signal here as well. We're going to add timeout to our code. So function on attack reset timer timeout when the timer timeout times out we're going to give attack points its original value now let's see how this goes attack 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 nice um, I have one confession to make. The animation restarting part is not really necessary. It was a mistake of mine. Um, I think this should be enough, actually. It's even e easier than I thought. But I say that we should we should give it a shot, just why not, but as I told you before, it's not really necessary at all. It was my mistake, so this is actually and really where the tutorial should, should end. But yeah, you can stay if you want to check it out. So, it's really simple, we just erase the Saber 3 part and a leaf zero sprite animation saver three we're going to say zero sprite play idle and saver points Whoops, attack points, I'm really sorry, I'm really used to my server points uh, code. Three. It really doesn't change anything, not even when I want to play audio. 
but I already explained it. I guess it worked uh, some time for me, but as I said before, it's not necessary at all. So I'm sorry for wasting your time with that explanation. But anyways, <laughs> um, I hope this was helpful, at least in some way. And yeah, have a good one. Thanks for watching.